So class, in the introduction, I gave you the quote from John Adams where he said, I am the vice president. In this, I am nothing, but I may be everything. And I asked you, what do you think John Adams' viewpoints are or on the, pres on the vice president? One thing, he could be nothing. Depends if he out the president outlives him. And in the other way, he could be everything if he doesn't outlive the president. Let's take a look at some other quotes about the vice president to get a little bit more uh, of their feeling about it. And then I do want you to, just so you know, there is a survey here. I do want you to click on this and make sure that you answer this. There's a couple other components throughout the survey. I'll point those out, but make sure that you complete that survey entirely throughout this entire lesson. There's numerous checks in there, and I just I do want you to fill it out as you move along, and you'll have to submit it today. A couple other, so let's go back to our things. What do vice presidents think about the vice presidential position itself? Well, John Adams, who was our first vice president, as we already know, said that he could become everything, but he's also been known to say that the vice president is the most insignificant office that was ever the invention of man contrived or his ad imagination conceived. John Nance Garner said, the vice president isn't worth a warm pitcher of spit. Eww. And Alvin Barkley said, one woman had two sons. One went away to sea and the other went to be vice president. Neither were seen or heard from again. So again, we'll take the first look. And sorry, that's an edit button. But uh, we'll get the link anyway. And make sure you fill this out. Okay, as you're going along. So this would be the first time you'd answer this question. What do you think former vice presidents feel about being vice president? I like the warm pitcher spit one the best. So use that one. Um, double shaka. So what do vice presidents actually do? Well, according to the quotes, they pretty much sit around, right? Constitutionally, not much. There's two key roles that the Constitution has. Um... One is to succeed the president. This just means to become president in the case in case of the presidential death or incapacity. So the last time actually we had a presidential uh, in, a president incapacitated was under George W. Bush. He went underwent surgery for a couple hours. During that time, Vice President Dick Cheney actually became president for a couple hours. Um, it's arguable as well that Woodrow Wilson's wife became president in some ways uh, because Woodrow Wilson became sick in his second term and his wife would often relay messages to his staff, but we don't know uh, who was able to confirm those messages. So arguably the first woman president was under Woodrow Wilson, even though it wasn't official. So the 12th... Um, so under the Constitution, if the president dies or becomes incapacitated for whatever reason, the vice president is next in line to become president. It used to be that these two were uh, both the president. The Today we have, we, when you go to vote, you vote for the president and the vice president separately, actually. But they used to be on this, uh, and they're on the same ticket in some ways, but they're essentially two different offices. What used to be the case was that the runner-up in the presidential election will become the vice president. Well, this is a problem, especially think about political parties. If someone you just ran against and just criticized their entire time, now you have to support, it's a little tricky. So now, um, you know, technically there are two different offices, but they're on the, um, they're really on the same ticket. So I have to, that's why I said separate ticket. I'll change that. So, but they're, they're the same, they run on the same ticket, but they have separate offices. So the vice president, if he were can't be fired by the president, he actually has to be impeached because people actually vote for him. So it's uh, it's not that easy. The other role of the vice president is that they preside over the Senate. There's very little power in this of itself. What they do is we have an even number of senators, 100. If there is an issue up for, a, you know, whether it's a law or uh, a confirmation of a certain judge or ambassador or cabinet member is that the vice president will 
act as a tiebreaker and they will typically vote however the president wants. So going back to John Adams, this was really important for something in the Alien and Sedition Acts, um, which kind of gave some powers when it came to uh, censoring speech. But uh, John Adams was a tiebreaker then. There's overall eight vice presidents who have taken over, which is about 20% of the amount of presidents we had. They include people like, uh, or that become, that were once vice president, that become president, but includes famous people like Harry Truman, Lyndon Baines Johnson, um, and Thomas Jefferson. Politically, the <coughs> role of the vice president has really changed more so from what the many of the quotes that we read over in the beginning lesson. The vice president today is now a top advisor of the president and can bring a wealth of experience or even serve as a diplomat to other countries. So uh, at the recording time, Mike Pence is the current vice president. And because Donald Trump in many ways didn't have much experience in Washington and how government worked, Mike Pence can help supplement how... Uh, that works since he serves as a representative and the governor of Indiana to kind of show uh, how that can work legally in some ways. So he serves as an advisor in that component. Joe Biden really helped Barack Obama when it came to foreign affairs and judicial picks um, because he brought a wealth of experience with the Senate with that. So uh, the vice president is a key ally to the president and can be sent to other countries or can be sent to legislate in Congress or lobby people in Congress. It's really a really important role and they don't take a back seat at all anymore. They're often a springboard to the, pre the White House itself. And it's not uncommon for someone to be vice president and then run for president. It's happened uh, quite a bit in our history. Politically, in elections, they also can, this is the key step you need to know too, uh, balance the ticket. This is a phrase. And what this means is that when the parties pick the vice president, they do so to appeal to a different audience and try and get the vote of that state or that demographic. So, um, you know, like I said, Donald Trump picked Mike Pence because Mike Pence had a little bit more experience in the in government itself. Um, Hillary Clinton was uh, picked Tim Kaine in the last election, and that was just to capture some of the, the more moderate positions or um, some of those middle states and capture Virginia even, which was the swing state. So it can be used to win a certain state. It can be used to highlight certain experience. Um, Barack Obama obviously did this with Joe Biden. Or, or it could be geographical in nature and trying to get after a state in the Electoral College. But let's talk briefly about why it's so important to at the JFK assassination. And by the way, at this point, you should be have this question done, which the following is the vice president's main role when it comes to actual government. So JFK, JFK, uh, John F. Kennedy was the uh, president for about three years and from 1960 to 1963, and he was the last president where the vice president succeeded them. Just a, a little bit of background before, and then I want you to watch this video. As Harry Truman said, the vice president is always a heart um, is always a heartbeat away from being president. When FDR died, Truman said to Eleanor Roosevelt, who was the first lady, "Is there anything I could do for you?" To which she replied, "No. Is there anything we could do for you? You are the man in trouble now." And Lyndon Baines Johnson certainly felt that when John F. Kennedy was killed in 1963. Uh, in Dallas by Harvey Lee Oswald, who was a double agent of Soviet Russia at the time. Uh, so a little bit of background, there's a little bit of evidence that suggests that uh, Oswald never got the memo that suggested that he wasn't supposed to kill the president, um, but this was definitely an operative by uh, Russia. There's some conspiracy around that too. I don't have time to get into that. Uh, I do have an interesting podcast if you would like to listen, learn a little bit more about JFK. Uh, it's really interesting because Harvey Lee Oswald was killed afterwards after he was arrested. Um, there's questions on whether other people wanted Kennedy dead. Most certainly everyone in politics wants someone dead at some point. But there's a lot of evidence to suggest that Russia was the main 
actor in this case. So think about this. Even if, at the time that occurs in November of 1963, we don't know that Russia is behind it at this point. Uh, it's the middle of the Cold War. It's only a year after the Cuban Missile Crisis where we literally almost went to war. Uh, we don't know who did it. We don't know if we're under attack. We don't know if there's going to be a mass execution. Why is it important for there to be a new president, a new leader, a new commander-in-chief right away? And you'll have to answer that question on the survey. But take a minute to watch the video. and That will encapsulate some of the drama that's occurring. LBJ insisted he was going to be inducted right or advanced to the office of president right away. Why would he want that? It, just so you know, the answer isn't given in the video itself. It's kind of a free thought question, but think about it. We're in a time of crisis. Why do we need someone right away? So after you have submitted that, just remember these key points couple, that you need to know from today. Constitutionally, the vice president's only roles are to preside over the Senate and to succeed the president in office if he is incapacitated or dies. That's it, constitutionally. Practically, however, the vice president is often used to campaign for the president's agenda and head projects at the request of the president and to balance the ticket. 